there comes a time in every man's life when he foregoes all common sense and actually hold on this is generally every man everywhere look we're still boys we're hooligans and sometimes maybe when we're feeling down when we've got a midlife crisis when we're 16 and and the semen is coming out of our ears we just want to have fun so this is it ladies and gentlemen a 2018 ktm super duke R. it is not new obviously i didn't time travel to 2018 and came back to 2022 trust me i would have stuck in 2019 went to the origin of the virus of <clears throat> the ccp oh, never mind would have kicked them in the balls and burned down the fucking lab before they released it yes i am a proponent of this is a lab grown virus it wasn't because somebody chewed the head of a bat because then we would all have to blame ozzy osbourne Makes only sense, right? No. You, this thing, I found it at a second-hand dealer. 15,000 kilometers on the odometer. The service list from the local KTM dealer. At 4,000, the front brake caliper had to be um, serviced or replaced or something because something was sticking. Yeah. 5,000 kilometers, service. And nothing since then. So when I got her, um, the fluids had already changed color. The oil was tar, uh, which didn't make sense because these uh, are brand new M9RR Metzlers, brand spanking new. So was this, did the guy change it? Did he do a track? Did he crash it, rebuild it and get rid of it? I will never know. I unfortunately will not because there is no damage. The frame is perfect. The rims aren't even scratched. I mean, this thing's bloody pristine. Okay. There was a little bit of a mark here. I'm guessing this one impacted a little bit. And there is a little bit of a bend, but minor. That could have been a side stand malfunction. So yeah, um, when I got it, the guys also did a full service, full service, which involved dropping the oil, etc. Oh, uh, before I forget, it is a KTM because um, when I test rode it, it already said front brake switch failure. I know that one from the 1190. <laughs> but why did I choose it? Well, because, okay, ignore the tail tidy, I installed that. As it stands here, it was OEM. Finding a Super Duke in OEM livery, where the guy hasn't, you know, taken the mirrors off and put these under bar things, or he's got this short exhaust, or he's done things to it where you know even with both eyes closed you can hear this screaming mutilation of this beautiful motorcycle yeah i know and now it's mine <laughs> to mutilate <laughs> sorry um that laughter um it was also one of the reasons why when i took it off um for test riding and when I rode it today again um, I, I, I don't know if I'm unique here but I had this maniacal laugh inside the helmet when I looked down and it was uh, triple digit speed in round about double the recommended um, limit and I'm not talking about the double digit speed limit Regardless, I had a very good loud laugh. I sounded a bloody maniacal evil villain at this point. And that is what you want from a damn motorcycle. Don't tell me it's, oh, it's nice, it's comfy and all that. That's why I've got this one. This one, it'll tear your face off. And you don't need to take my 
opinion, how many videos are there of the Super Duke where everybody is scared or it's so much bike, it's a hooligan? Well, I'm truthful about this. Um, I rode her in rain mode for the first couple of times because I didn't know what the fuck this thing was doing. And even then, rain mode was... Yeah, sure, it's 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 tame. Mm-hmm, sure, mm-hmm. Then I put her in street. I haven't gone to sport mode yet. I did not even turn off the anti-wheelie traction. Um, before I forget, it's got all the software upgrades. Regardless, this bike, if you're doing 120 kilometers an hour in sixth gear, you do this, and the engine stutters. Like, you, it's telling you, you are in the wrong gear. At which point you shift down to fifth, and it's better. You're at 120, you shift down to fourth, and twist the throttle. Now she's coming alive. And before you know it, you have shifted up to sixth, and you are going faster than your guarding angel or your mind can comprehend. Because all you need to do at that point is look down and see how fast those white stripes become a solid white line all of a sudden. Yeah. Can you tell I'm infatuated with this thing? Because it's crazy and it'll kill me. But at least they'll bury me with a smile on my face. What's left of me? We'll probably have to. There you go. Touch that and put me in the casket. Or cremate me. Like, uh, what was that movie? Dracula Dead and Loving It. Master! Freak. Okay, that's, that's an old joke. You won't get that. Never mind. So now you know this thing is a handful, a bit crazy. It's a 2018 model. As you can see, it's got a couple extras. Ignore these. Those were fitted by me. Uh, it had OEM handles. It had These came with it. It has the KTM power seats, or whatever that is. Um, full Acropovich exhaust. Titanium. Yeah, the full thing. Uh, if you had earphones on when you started this uh, video, you would have gathered as much of the sound quality of this thing uh what else it also has the radiator guard that came with it which is nice because stones will flick up and destroy everything in this bloody country and uh that's about it when it comes to extras and etc so it's really bare bone but it's a naked coming to the ktm extras and here I have to really ask KTM, this is no, this, microtransactions, I'm not a fan of these, and neither am I when you buy a bike, and in order to activate the quick shifter, the wheelie pack, the track pack, and all the other settings, you have to go to the dealer for some software jockey to whip out his cable, plug it into your favorite girl, and then wait while he pumps her full of... <sighs> Focus. Basically, behind the paywall to activate all the extras that are already here. Okay. It's not just, you know, you have to buy a dongle, or the quick shifter has, you have to insert a pin, or do something to the engine. No, it's all just here. It all just needs a software patch. <sighs> Which makes me wonder, why do you have to go to the dealer? I mean, aren't there interns in Austria who just copy that file and, you know, do the back alley job? No? Okay. I guess I, never mind. So, that's that. Um, brand new tires, brakes, when they serviced it, brand new SBS brake pads in the front. And, um, well, they did service it. Hold that thought. What do you mean, hold that thought? Well, easy. I've got one of th these little sticks that tells you how much moisture content is in the brake fluid and the clutch fluid. Guess what it told me? 
more than a percent of water ingress. On this one, the rear was about 1.5. So what did this guy do? Promptly dropped all the fluid and put dot 5.1 in it. Same with the clutch. And here, gentlemen, a little tip. When I test rode it, the clutch activation was round about here. That was it. And you know what fixes that? This little thing here. So, there's air here. And all what you do, you hold this, you take an M6 um, wrench, open it quickly and close it, and then release. And what that'll do, it'll spit out or fart out all the air, and your clutch is back to 100% working conditions. Same can be done on the brakes, but you won't have that many issues. It's the clutch that's the biggest issue. Okay, so there's that. I didn't drop the oil yet because I want to take this on a 300 kilometer ride where the engine oil has time to cleanse the internals and then you drop it. Plus, on the 25th, I've got a track day. Yes, I've got a track day because I want to know what the hell this thing can do on the corner. Yes. <sighs> Looking forward to it. Things that still need to be done, though. The coolant. It's a 2018 model. It's 2022. Services in 5,000, because then it'll hit 20,000. The coolant will be four years old. Long life coolant, I don't know if the, it is, needs to be dropped. So that's a forthcoming video. Uh, tires I didn't need to do. Oh, there is one thing I did, and there will be a video. Change the fork oil, because I didn't like it diving so hard. Make no mistake, these brakes grip like nobody's business. Even a small tap and you will stop and nearly go over the bars. So fantastic, really great. But other than that, checked all the bolts, torqued it, made sure everything is in 100% working condition. As you know, because gentlemen, if you ride a bike like this, you don't go for the cheap Chinese tires. You don't go for the low octane fuel, and you certainly don't go for the cheap oil and lubrication. No, this bike will rip your face off and make you the best of friends with the gutter. So you will need every little bit of help that everything goes right. Ah, there's one thing I did as well. These bolts, they were, what was it? Four of these were black torques and the bottom ones were normal galvanized, normal KTMs. Don't know if that is standard, so I will swap them all out for stainless. Three or four grade. And a little bit for the cell phone. That reminds me. When you remove the seat, click, you lift this up, forward. You will find a toolkit, which is absolutely useless. Uh, you will also find, right here, a USB plug, where you can plug your uh, phone charger in. Well, your phone cable. And the phone itself can be stored under here because it's got a, how do we say, a compartment for it. Mind you, newer cell phones are too big for it. So if you've got a small one, don't say I, don't say I speak from experience. No, actually I do. I had the Samsung S10e, so that was a very small one. It fit right into the palm of my hand and did everything. Stop laughing. Um, okay, right? No problem. And then there's a battery. And then there's nothing else. There we go. So that's it. In terms of electronics, track pack, etc. Uh, there is a drawback riding this bicycle. Bicycle, he calls it. Motorcycle. Your view is here. You actually have to look down to see how fast you're going, not that you actually care, or if there's any problems. Gentlemen, it is such a visceral feeling that when you look like this, well, in this direction, and you're going fast, you have this boyhood dream and inclination of just raising both your arms forward and humming the Superman tune at that point. <laughs> Uh, can you tell I'm a youngster all of a sudden? Yeah. Right. So that's my new little hot rod. 
I still have the Tiger and mind you I also want to drop the fork oil on that one and check the head bearing grease the same with this one I still need to do the head bearing grease but I need one of those specialized paddock stands so it goes up its nostril whatever and of course there are still a couple of upgrades coming videos will be forthcoming one of them will be um, double take mirrors because if you're on the track day whereas these are well KTM 0815 are nothing new and of course <sighs> crash protection oh on the rear I've got a little bit front uh, I'm already faffing with an idea so at least you've gotten to listen to me rant about a new toy if you don't hear from me well not as frequently I'll probably be in hospital trying to well how do we say remove my head from my ass because I was being stupid with this thing so there's plenty to look forward to and as always Thank you for viewing this video. I know many of you state that I'm an old pervert, that I'm quite useless, and that my humor couldn't even entertain a two-year-old. Well, sucks to be you, because my two-year-olds definitely giggled when I made my jokes. Later.